ambassadors of Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20. Now are we the ambassadors of Christ. The ambassador talks on the behalf of the president. But see the problem of the believer. The Holy Ghost knows that he will confront a mountain tomorrow and his faith is weak. And the Holy Ghost shoots a scripture into his heart. Meditate on that scripture overnight. But he went watching movies. When he confronts that mountain, that scripture is what he's supposed to jump out. But he never chewed it. So when he comes there, he's standing and saying, Lord, where are you? Lord, are you alive? And God say, ah, I'm in you. When you showed up, I showed up. You are the one they see to see me. You carry my image. You embody my dimension. But the problem is that when the word came, he didn't catch it. This is why in the New Testament, one of our preoccupations is to catalambalo. Any signal in the spirit will catch. Sometimes you are even sleeping and God shows you a trance. And in that trance, you went into that business. And when people were talking, you saw yourself, you kept quiet. When everybody was done talking, you made one sentence and it changed everything. The next day you go for that meeting and then you see the same setting. Because God is teaching you how to practice being godly. He's teaching you how to manifest God. Because you are not going there to cry and say, where are you? So he's teaching you the way that the reality will manifest. There are times when there is a, 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 a meeting or an engagement in two days time. The Holy Ghost comes ahead and says, the energy level where you should talk from is a bit higher than where you are. Take a 24 hours fast and pray in tongues for six hours. What is he teaching you? To practice divinity. To practice. You know the way Peter calls it? He said, according as his divine power. Second Peter 1 verse 3. He said, he has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. He said, but it's through the epignosis, the experiential knowledge of them that he has called to glory and virtue. He said, because he wants us to escape the corruption that is in the world through loss, he made us partakers of his divine nature. So everything God would have wanted to do, God credits into you and sends you and say, go there on my account. The job of the Holy Ghost is to make you prepared enough to represent God. And sometimes the Holy Ghost comes ahead and says, take a three days fast. If you take a three days fast, when you reach there, the word will come out. You don't need to meditate. Just show up, open your mouth. But you need a height. There is a height where you will talk from. It's a reality of the ascended order. But it will take you three days fast to be able to mount up. Did you not read your Bible? It said, they that wait upon the Lord, they renew their strength. It said, they mount up with wings. They mount up. See, there's a realm where we talk from. There are things when you talk at the natural, but there are other things that only when your wings come can you speak. If your wings have not appeared, you can't talk. Because the set of walls are in the, in the heavens. This is why we don't know. We need to learn Jesus. The Bible said in Mark 1.35, in the cool of the day, he went to a solitary place. When he's done praying, he enters the market. They bring the deaf, he say open. They bring the blind, he say open. It's not about open, it's where he's talking from. He sent his disciples out. They cast out devils. Matthew 10. Matthew 17, they brought another demon possessed. They didn't know that they needed to go and they were there laboring. The man who brought his son was offended. He said, I brought my son here. Your disciples, they could not cast him out. They suffered that public ridicule. Not because the capacity was not there, but they were not ascended. But the Jesus who came from the mountain showed up and said, out of him. You know, when he went to the mountain, that's when the disciples knew what happens on the mountain. They said, as he prayed. They said, the fashion of his countenance was altered. Glory is renewed. Authority is renewed. Dimensions are renewed. And so when he shows up, the demons see God, not man. The problem with you is that you have been given the faith of the Son of God, but you have violated the protocol. Sometimes you are talking with your friends. Conversation is exceeding 30 minutes. You start losing your peace. You know this is time to stop. Energy. You are effusing too much energy. You are releasing too much power. It's time to stop. It's time to stop. Sometimes you now feel guilty. It's the faith in you walking. The faith of the Son of God. You have exhausted bandwidth. Go for refilling. But you talk and talk away energy. And the moment you reach home, somebody is conversing. And then you go and carry dry scriptures. 
in the name of Jesus, get up. You don't know that when we talk, virtue must flow. The Bible said they touched him and virtue went out of him and healed them all. This faith works with virtue. You must generate virtue for your words to carry power. That's why the Bible says he's the author and the finisher. He gives you the faith and he teaches you what to do for the faith to produce result. It's called the operation of the faith of the Son of God. And unfortunately, even pastors, most of them don't operate here. Meanwhile, go and check those who are herbalists. They know how to manage what they carry in their spirit. They know how to manage it. There are many sorcerers that don't see the sun for six months every year so that they can conjure sufficient energy to alter the outcome of a nation. And so they can enter their room in January and come out in July. And when they cause a land, it remains like that for another cycle. Because they know what to do to harness energy in darkness, pay prices, to carry essence of, of demonic power. So that when they come out, if they talk, their voice is like the, the communication of a thousand princes. But you who God dwells on your inside, you are deflated and you come talking from a lifeless realm. Every one of us carry the faith of the Son of God. The problem is that very few are operating in it. Oh, and when you start growing, you will discover that that faith is sensitive to certain appetites. For some, it's worship only. Every time you worship your child, you can't see any impossibility. When you come out, they tell you something is impossible. What you are seeing is a testimony. They tell you this guy is about to die. The next thing you see a vision of him testifying on Sunday. So when men are seeing death, you have gone too high. Where you are seeing from, there's no death. You are seeing him testifying. And they won't know what is happening. You have submitted to the finisher. He has taught you how to walk that faith. And so when you are singing, you are not practicing. You are not tuning your voice. When you are singing, you are ascending. You can be washing and singing, cooking and singing. And the point will come when you will hit a crescendo where you have not entered before. And you'll be arrested. Because new angels, you have come into the cycle of new angels. And for a while you'll be there. It's an encounter. And you will need to grow in it. A point comes when you grow in it until it becomes a radar. When you come into a place... Because you are present, things happen. The Bible spoke concerning Samuel. When he sat in Nayot in Ramah, anybody who entered that radar came under his influence. He didn't need to talk anymore. That faith had become an atmosphere. And he could change things by the power of that atmosphere. Imagine what will happen if five of us here begin to manifest our dimension. I tell you, South Africa is too small. And because the devil knows how this works, he preoccupies us with distractions. He preoccupies us with iniquity. He preoccupies us with things that diffuse us. And so, you know, somebody can do 21 days fast, three hours, he diffuses it. Either with gossip, or with malice, or with a movie, or he just diffuses it, and he feels it that is empty. Because your, your conscience is like a radar. It shows you where your battery level is. If a powerful generation will rise, we must understand the organic operations of spirit life. And you need to know that you have the faith of the Son of God and that faith is operated by the Holy Ghost. He will give you operational modalities to stay afloat so that when you talk, your voice can become like the voice of God. This is what the prophets of old knew. They say holy men of God spake as they were moved. They knew when God moved them. They were moved into fasting, moved into prayer, moved into waiting, moved into worship. And when they came out, they came out like gods walking among men. I prophesy to you, a generation that manifests the faith of the Son of God will emerge from this conference. Hmm. Let me just list the remaining three. Go and study it so that we'll worship. You know, these things are not just a message, they are a body. You know, the, the office of the apostle makes you teach not what you read. We read, but most of our messages come from our encounters and our processes with God so that we can talk life, not just give you syllables to read. I'm telling you what I share with you tonight, they are echoes and impartations into your dimension. Most of you will leave this conference, you will discover that 
in another three weeks, you will speak to bones and they will straighten. You will speak and circumstances will be altered. Because for some of you, these walls will take sleep from you. And night times will become moments of intimacy. Some of you, these walls will bring you into the corridor of fasting. And as you leave this conference, appetite for food will die. Until the spirit man is born through process. And you will discover that locked into you are dimensions of Christ that a generation have not seen. I'm telling you, most times we celebrate what we see. The best of God is not behind, it's ahead. Everything we have seen, including the one talking to you here, is nothing compared to what is yet to be seen. Some of you sitting here, you carry graces and dimensions that can liberate South Africa in one year, in one month, some even in one week. You will talk and mobilizations will happen that will change the foundation of the land. But do you know how to look on to him? When he shows up at night, can you defy sleep? When you plan a banquet and it comes with a protocol of fasting, can you shut down the kitchen and say there is a journey that I must embark on? Because this is the way of sons. We travel with Elohim until he teaches us the oracles of his spirit so that we can manifest him in his brightest colors. Because our manifestation is what the hope of a generation depends on. He said the earnest expectation of the creation. He waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Why do we look unto Jesus? We look unto him because he brings salvation to us. Why do we look unto Jesus? We look unto him because he alters our faith and he finishes it. See, most of you, when this conference is over, listen, I'm talking to the leaders of South Africa. See, a new South Africa is coming with new set of leaders, with new ranking in the spirit. I'm showing you what you have in order to confront the beast of the land. The same beast that made your fathers to compromise. The reason you will come into power and you'll be able to stand where some of the fathers fell is because you have learned these truths. Africa is in danger because most of our fathers compromised. There are presidents, senators and governors that sold 50 years of a nation and of a territory. So even if you are a good leader and you come into power, the land has been sold. There's nothing you can do. There are fathers that went, to, and we are, we are very excellent fathers. I honor fathers. I quote them. I revere them. But I'm not talking about the few handful that are still beaming the torch. I'm talking about the majority that betrayed us. There are certain nations today you enter, you are a suspect on arrival. Because those who went ahead of you, they sold your inheritance. If a new generation will rise that can speak at the gate, they must come with new weapons. So when I talk to you, I talk to you like myself, the leaders of the new world that is coming. And there are powers that we must carry to be able to bring emancipation to Jacob. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you and it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. 
But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me, give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up, even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily, remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward, through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.